Learning English is like learning to fly. There's lots of different things to navigate, like informal English, nouns, verbs, adjectives, and much more. This vocabulary video will focus on words related to insects, but not just their names. We'll give you lots of additional English words with lots of context. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell to get an instant notification direct to your inbox every time we post a video. Are you ready to begin? In informal English or slang, insects can also be referred to as many different things, like critters or pests, bugs, creepy crawlies or vermin. Are you ready for your first insect? Here we have fly. Repeat after me. Fly. Make sure not to confuse this with the verb to fly. Flies are not very popular. In fact, some adjectives we would use to describe them are annoying, pesky, irritating, bothersome, and infuriating. This horse might be thinking, these flies are really annoying. Our next insect is the mosquito. Mosquito. This insect can be dangerous as it spreads disease. When insects gather in large groups, we call them a swarm. This is a group noun. Repeat after me. Swarm. A swarm of mosquitoes. Our third insect is the cricket. Repeat after me. Cricket. Make sure not to confuse the insect cricket with the sport of cricket. So pay close attention to the context of what you're reading or listening to, to understand which is which. In English, we say that a cricket sings when they make their distinctive sound. The verb to sing is an irregular verb. For more on irregular verbs, check out our playlist on our YouTube channel. The next insect we will cover is the honeybee. Repeat after me, honeybee. As their name suggests, these bees produce honey. Honey is a common noun. Do you like honey? Let us know in the comments below and how you like to eat it. I like it with pancakes. A group of bees is called a colony. Repeat after me. Colony. And a colony of bees live in a structure called a hive. With these words related to bees, let's make a sentence. We could say, the honey bee colony makes honey in their hive. The honey bee colony makes honey in their hive. For our next insect, we have a very close cousin of the honeybee. The bumblebee. Repeat after me. Bumblebee. What are the differences between a honeybee and a bumblebee? Let's use some comparative adjectives to find out. The bumblebee has a bigger body and a hairier body. We could also say the bumblebee has darker wings than the honeybee and that it has a longer life. Our next insectoid is the ant. Repeat after me. Ant. Ants live in large groups, just like a bee, and the group noun related to them is also a colony. An ant colony lives in a nest. So we have the group noun colony and the common noun nest. Our next tiny creature is the aphid. Repeat after me. Aphid. The aphid is more commonly known as a green fly. Repeat after me. Green fly. Our next creature is the caterpillar. Repeat after me. Caterpillar. The caterpillar is part of an intriguing natural process. The caterpillar is actually a larvae. As part of its development, 
it enters a state called chrysalis, and it does this inside a structure it creates called a cocoon. The larvae will stay in the cocoon until it has developed into a butterfly. Repeat after me. Butterfly. The transition into a butterfly is part of a process called metamorphosis. This is defined as the process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages. A close relative of the butterfly is the moth. Repeat after me. Moth. As we can see from our video clip, moths can come in lots of different shapes, sizes and colours. And these words are all common nouns. Did you know that the larvae form of a moth is called a silkworm? And the silkworm is responsible for the production of the fabric called silk. Repeat after me. Silk. The next insect we will look at is the colourful and small ladybird. Ladybird. This is what this insect is called in British English. In American English, it is called a ladybug. Repeat after me. Ladybug. Our next insect is one that I really don't like. Earwig. Repeat after me. Earwig. I really don't like them because I think they are creepy, horrible, and scary. What adjectives would you use to describe an earwig? Let us know in the comments below. Our next insect is the beetle. Repeat after me. Beetle. Now please don't confuse a beetle with the Beatles, the famous British band. Coming up next we have the mysterious stick insect. Repeat after me. Stick insect. What adjective would you use to describe a stick insect? You could say it was very thin. Our next insect is known for being quite aggressive. The wasp. Repeat after me. Wasp. When they get aggressive, you might get injured. The injury you can receive from a wasp or a bee is called a sting. The word sting can be used as a noun or a verb. A noun example in a sentence is, I received a sting from a wasp, or the wasp has a sting at the rear of its body. An example of this irregular verb in a sentence is, a wasp stung me yesterday, or the wasps will sting you if you get too close. Our next insect is the troublesome cockroach. Repeat after me. Cockroach. Adjectives associated with a cockroach would be vile, disgusting, or revolting. Can you think of any more? Can you believe we're about to see our last insect of our video? Here we have the mantis. Repeat after me. Mantis. The mantis has evolved over time to develop bodies that mimic or copy its environment around it. This ability is known as camouflage and is used by lots of different types of animals, including humans like in the military. That brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your support. Did we leave out your favorite insect? Let us know in the comments. And we want to hear if you have any suggestions for any future videos. If you have any friends learning English, make sure to share this video with them. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you have any questions about grammar or vocabulary, make sure to get in touch with us. There's lots of different ways. We're on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Follow us today and remember, keep learning English like a pro.